Hello guys, and this is What If Deku Was Foolish, the redo, and it's been a very long time and I haven't really uploaded because, well, it's summer and I really wanted to hang out with my family uh, and go places, so I haven't been uploading, but uh, I guess some of you kind of skipped that uh, announcement, but that's fine, uh, this is sort of a... Uh, well, just a video to pass the time here. I am, I'm not really doing anything and it's like really early in the morning. And like, at least one person is up and I don't really want to wake them up because uh, they're my grandma and I love her. So, I'll show she makes the best brownies, but this is getting off topic. Let's continue. Okay. We'll start with the headcanons, and then we'll get on to the story. Okay, Izuku is the god of the ocean, death, undying, revival, and so he can control anything connected to the ocean, the uh, call decides, like, their fate, I guess. Undying, he can make people immortal, but has never done it because he didn't... F think it was necessary since everyone should die when they do not spend it trying to be immortal and revival basically necro necromancy but not the same izuku has visited the human cities slash countries and continents around the ro world and knows mostly their whole history and even things they wanted to keep a secret but he has no desire to see their society crumble he rather see it flourish and evolve from the background and help when required like small jobs and maybe war but if it doesn't involve the wither cult or the egg he will just leave it alone sorry if you hear any background noise i have no control over that pretty sure that's the neighbors izuku has a liking to the japan J japanese and has entered their countries for country for hundreds of years just looking around and exploring sense of their beautiful landscapes and buildings and has made a made temple dedicated to them that is on the edge of the ocean which slowly goes into the water envelops and enveloped in water but he keeps it more uh, the water down because he doesn't want it all of it to be in water but then he also made another one in egypt also near the sea which has an identical symbol since he liked it and the egyptian one is a summer home and the japanese one is a spring home and there is uh, also hot springs next to the japanese temple so okay izuku's chat still follows him and they're sea spirits that hold water in the air into shapes of sea animals mostly any aquatic animal to interact with izuku since they are his god uh, their god and will give him little trinkets like sea dollars small ingots of minerals pretty shells and pretty rocks izuku has studied uh, multiple languages and he is fluent in them izuku when he is building he will usually be in his 23 point uh not point three twenty three foot three uh form and build his buildings but he can become a bit taller for other for bigger buildings izuku calls himself uh izuku in japan so but foolish junior his name is going to be going to be the same because it reminds him of his god name but he isn't just izuku he's foolish too so he can change his eyes like a lot into multiple occasions, such as turning his eyes into completely out of emerald and the esclera and all, having his eyes be completely green and not crystal, also the sclera and all, and having normal eyes, but having them pure green and really pretty. Izuku has sharp teeth like sharks. He has gold jewelry like all over him. And like all of his clothes styles, at least some, like earrings or necklaces. His hair is usually like gold, but he can change it to brown or black. 
He can change his size to be 6A, but any lower than that, his back will start to hurt. And most doors he can't fit or have to lower his head to get through. And then stand at least, uh, there's at least a two or three ruler length before he hits his head on the ceiling. He can turn his legs into a shark tail. And uh, he blasts the water around his buildings, so it's holy water, or prime water, I don't know. He can control when he does have a tail and usually turns shark, and he doesn't mind, but usually turns into the shark tail when he touches water, but he doesn't mind. He has also patches of gray skin, or shark skin, and gold patches. Also, it blends in with his normal skin. Foolish Junior is older than Finley, and Foolish Junior is older, and Finley is younger, and she's like a toddler, and Foolish Junior is like four years old, and they have little wings. Izuka has wings, but that's when he wants to have them, and they're like tattoos on his back until he wants to fly or something. They all have pointed ears. Foolish Junior and Finley have matching clothes, and Izuku finds it adorable. Sea animals recognize Izuku and will get out the way, and the young one will try to play with him, usually. He will play with them, but if he's busy, he'll give them an apologetic look or a pat and go on with his busy schedule. Izuku made all of the creatures uh ha- made all of the creatures in the ocean, so he is immune to all poison found in sea life. And uh he knows uh, some of them can be nightmare fuel and dangerous as hell, but he loves them anyway. By the way, mo- water mobs are in there too. Minecraft water mobs hang around the temple since their god resides within them, so they make themselves at home. No ship. I don't want a ship. And since y'all don't really want a ship either. Uh, let's see, where were we? Izuku knows how to slow dance and and most dances since he's been around for so long. Izuku has a full library of the world's history and also the history of the Dream SMP and how it slowly disappeared and the members slowly drifted away and to never be seen again. But by now they all died except Eric, Captain Puffy, and Puffy stayed alive and young by Izuku keeping her alive but Eric couldn't die of old age, but he doesn't know where they are, but he knows at least they're safe at least because of the brooch he gave him them since it didn't break yet, so they're not injured, so that's a good thing. Izuku can travel fast underwater and go to different continents within, uh, like, three, two, three, uh hours, but depending on how much space they are apart, it wouldn't take too long. Okay, let's get started into the to the plot. God, my back. Ooh. I've been slouched over for a long time, Jesus, and this is only the first take. Also, if y'all really, really want a ship, just say it in the comments, but, uh, no adults, please. Even though he's a god, I don't feel comfortable with that. So, but like if it's a really requested thing, then I guess. So, uh, let's get into this. It's narrator POV. Sorry for the people who like first person POV, but it just fits more with all of the people who will be introduced. <clears throat> Japan has been discovering many, many historic structures, and Japan has been discovering on different continents to take credit for finding them. They went for Egypt, and since the countries have been on rough terms for a while due to the sudden appearance of historical structures, and have been competing, and have gotten more aggressive and hungry for knowledge, and with knowledge comes power. With each team of explorers, there are at least 4 to 11 heroes on standby to help and protect the explorers if any enemy forces arrive, and protect any artifacts or information with all their might. And in all of this exploration, they are going to Egypt. We follow the exploration team, which has been accompanied by David Shields and his daughter, Melissa Shields, 
with some of David's students, only two. Then we have four members of the Explorer team, who are professionals, and two other students of theirs, and then heroes. Aizawa, that are Aizawa, Hawks, Midnight, Miracle, and All Might, who tagged along since his name's Melissa, but of course, in his hero suit. But also Nezu, since he decided this was vacation and got comfy in Aizawa's scarf. After a 12 hour pr- pl- pr- plane ride, god damn it, it's been a while since I recorded, sorry. They arrived in Egypt. They get a ride to the desert as they walk through the desert for a long while before they found a temple that had a moat filled with water and a boat on the other side that didn't seem to be old. Were they the first ones to find it? They thought. Hawks then offered to fly everyone over there, but Mirako, Aizawa, and All Might declined to them having a way to get on the other side on their own. And they had to take, at least take one person to the other side. All Might takes Melissa and David. Mirako takes two of each student. Aizawa also takes the remaining students. And Hawks flies the rest of the others over there. Once they are on the other side, they walk up to the gates of the structure, which was open and they slowly walked in in caution do excuse me as they all walk in they notice the giant sphinx statue and then looks to their left to see two men that seem to be of egyptian descent if you recognize it then you know Walsh's summer house uh and two men that seem to be of ancient Egyptian descent. And then the path splits in two. When it splits, they put an equal amount and go around to see it wasn't a split and it was just a middle piece. They then see an entrance and they prepare to be bombarded with traps of all kind. But then they feel water at their feet as they look around and hear a voice. Mortals, why do you come here? They look in the front of them to see a giant throne that seems to fit for a god of the ocean, and they seem to see a a statue that was made of pure gold and said, Do you not know your own tongue? All Might then says, "Who, Who are you? The voice then says, I should be asking you that, coming into my home. All Might then thought to himself, is he the protector of this temple? All Might then says, we are explorers, we don't want to fight, but we will defend ourselves if you initiate and attack us. And you? The statue then says, I am foolish, the god of the ocean, death, life, undying, and revival. So, I ask... What was your goal? To to take everything you can and shower in riches for the rest of your life without working an hour of your life again? Or live in a life of luxury and be the big boss of everything and have everything you ever wanted? What is it, mortal? Izuku looks down, still in his 23-foot-3 form, glaring and waiting for an answer as the men and women tremble on the floor. Where they stand. All Might then says, We are here to explore and beat our competitor. Could we have something to prove our discovery here, God of Oceans? There was a tremble in his voice, and Izuku looked down at the man and says, You may, seeing how polite you asked me. Let me have you for dinner. Dinner. You may consider this as an apology for falsely accusing you of your intentions. I will lead the way. He smiled down at them as if they were small animals that were scared and comforted them as if they didn't know what was going on. He looked at them as lower life forms who couldn't protect themselves if they tried. They left as if even if they tried to defeat him. With all their strength, they would lose without any honor. They followed the god as they noticed he got smaller 
and smaller until he was only half the size of a ruler below All Might. He might have shrunk, but he still had the same presence of a god and, in, and not a small one. As they walked, they looked at the walls and saw hieroglyphics on the walls that looked similar to the god in front of them. They then entered oh, entered a large dining hall that was larger than they would ever imagine. The chairs were oddly their size, and they sat down. Izuku sits on a chair that is at the head of the table and says, Ask for anything you would like, and it will be brought here. For example, Katsudan. Sorry if I said that wrong. A servant comes over and nods, and a few seconds later, brought in front of and brought it in front of him and say says see the group nods and one of the servants come up to them and they hesitantly order for something and it comes over to izuku to continue and then it brings their food and they eat but then melissa speaking up says um sir foolish is that your real name? It sounds familiar to my tongue, but for others it sounds foreign. Is there a different name we could call you? Izuku then looked up, looked down, uh, looked down? Up? Whatever. Uh, and he says, Izuku, you may call me Izuku. She smiled and nodded at him, and they ate. They, they then all heard frit steps of a lot of people, which everyone heard, and Izuku got up and turned into his 23.3 foot form and started to walk to the noise to quiet it or even kill it. His footsteps shook the ground below him and he made his way to all the noise. As he made it to the front, he saw a large group of people who looked and someone who looked like the head of the group says, You! Who are you? Are you with the team with All Might? Izuku looked down at them, and All Might came rushing in to see the other group, and All Might says, Kaneshiro! Why are you here? You know we are in the same con- We are from the same country! God damn it. <laughs> Kaneshiro then says, We may fr- be from the same country, but we are on competing teams. All Might then says, yells, Well then, so be it! Come and fight! Kaneshiro then yells, Then come at me, you coward! They then start to run at each other, and the others run at each other, who came along with Kaneshiro, and a loud boom. And Izuku yells, Enough! And that's the end. <laughs> Yeah, there will be a part two, and this is the redo of What If Deku Was Foolish, and I uh, hope you all have a had a good summer. Uh, I hope you all have a good day and night, good time zone, or wherever the hell it is where you're at, and goodbye.